Hello, hello. I came on a minute early. So obviously it's not playing on the things yet. Very happy. Yeah. Came on a minute early. So I'm just on a minute early. All right, guys. So hello, hello. I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday. So Sunday where I hope to inspire you to make a project bag this Sunday. Right now. Today. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, I'm going to scroll up. We got Robin, Brenda, Candy, Tracy, Sharon, Nora, Paulette, um, Donna, Patty Boo. Uh, I can't see what that word says. Elish? Probably. Nora, Sharon, uh, Rose, Pam. Uh, Dee Dee, Libby, Reva, Tracy, Ronnie, Brenda, Delia, Judy, Mary, Debbie, Teresa, R, Pam, Mary, Gloria, and a bunch, bunch more. Welcome, everybody. Uh, glad you all can make it today. <sighs> I almost didn't because I slept most of the day. I am so fatigued, <laughs> but I'm here, and I shall prevail. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to make a project bag. If you don't know what a project bag is, it is one of these. Or wait, wait, it's one of these. It has just got clear vinyl, some fabric on the front, the back, the inside, the sides, you name it, and some binding on the outside. I'm not going to do the kind of project bag that has um, folded corners on the bottom. I'm just gonna do a flat type of project bag. So it's gonna be the third size. So here's a small, here's a medium. We're gonna make the large today, which I don't have an example of because I need to make one <laughs> right now, <laughs> today's video. So I'm gonna set these back here so you know what we're making, little project bags. So for today's project bag, the first thing you will need is clear vinyl. Now, if you don't have clear vinyl, lots of people have suggested, and I suggest the same thing, a clear shower curtain. Try to get the more thicker ones, though, because some of the dollar store clear shower curtains are very, very thin. So uh, they might be a little iffy on the ripping when it comes to the sewing. So I'm not sure how those would work. But I just get clear vinyl on this big roll thing from... You can get it from Walmart in a bag. You can get it from your local quilt store. Anywhere, just ask them wherever the clear vinyl is and you can get that. The next thing I use in my little project bags is some batting. Now, this is just a nice big, little bit over 16-inch scrap because that's the size we're making as a 16-inch project bag. Is a nice big chunk of scrap batting and a 16 or bigger inch zipper. Mine just so happens to be 19 inches because I have lots of big zippers. Then for the binding, we need just a big chunk of scrap. I literally have less than a fat quarter's worth here if I chopped it in half and put it to the side, you know. And it's not even the full selvage to selvage, it's just a nice big chunk of scrap. So again, you can use a fat quarter for the binding part. And then I like I put in the description below this video, is it's all scraps. So it's bigger than a fat quarter, but smaller than a half yard chunks. I really won't be using all this. I'm just, I gave you guys an example that I'm using scraps. So I have this brown with white, like a stone look scrap here. And then my vinyl bag, these will be my accent color. My, my, uh, project bag is going to be sock monkeys. <laughs> I don't know why I love this fabric, but I do. <laughs> I just no, going to, uh, he's teasing me about my sock monkey fabric, but I'm just going to be using some more of this sock monkey fabric that was given to me because um, I didn't have a bigger square. So this was just the yardage that was left over. And again, I'm just going to cut from it because, you know, whatever, but you don't need more than a half a yard okay which is what i put so as long as it's scraps but again the scraps i have weren't big enough and i didn't want to piece them together i just want one solid 
piece of soft monkey fabric for this. And that's all the supplies you need. Literally, we're just using scraps. And you can do patchwork if you want to. You can just take a leftover block and build onto it and make your project bag where the backside or the inside of your window has, say, like a patchwork block in it. Or you can have that patchwork block on the backside. However you want to do it, just know we're going to be making it to 16 inches. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to start off with ironing some fabric. But first, I guess, yeah, I got to turn an iron on for that. So while the iron is warming, we'll start off by cutting out some vinyl because the iron needs to get hot first. Because I didn't pre-plug that in. All right. So I'm gonna move all this out of the way and what we're gonna start with is some vinyl. And I'm going to be cutting out a 16, why did I say 16? A 14 inch piece of vinyl, 14 inch square. Sorry for that rustling paper sound in my microphone. <laughs> so I'm going to cut out a 14 inch square. And you can use a rotary cutter on vinyl. You could just do however works for you. You can use a pair of scissors, however. I'm just gonna go over here to 14. And since you can see right through the vinyl, just know that your ruler will stick to it. You can line it right up. And then you need a rotary cutter. So I'm gonna come up here and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut just a little bit beyond that 14 inch mark. And then I'm gonna turn this and move that vinyl out of the way and cut a straight line this way and the way i know it's straight is i'm going to line it up right here on the vinyl itself there we go right there i saved myself some room for error just in case Four millimeters my vinyl is i don't know millimeter it's it doesn't say on it no it doesn't say on any of this It just says you can use it for bags, sweater bags, card cover, table covers, furniture covers, cutting table covers. It doesn't actually have a size on it. It's not super thick, but it's not the thin stuff like you would get with a shower curtain. I'm gonna probably say it's like one or two millimeters. It's not very big, not very thick. All right, and now I'm going to actually cut a uh, 14 inch square out of this by lining it up. It's kind of wonky. I cut it kind of wonky. And that's okay if it's not exact, but it wants to slide and move around. So I'm just gonna do my best to line it up, and fix this side right here and everything else is good. hard because everything wants to stick to the vinyl. Right there. Thank you. Sorry, it's see-through so you guys can't tell <laughs> what I'm cutting. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it hard for me to even see what I'm cutting. Oh look, the first person to mention it, Florence wants to know if you got a haircut. Oh yes, I cut my hair on not this Friday that just passed, but last Friday. Yeah, no one noticed last week. Yeah, nobody noticed last week, but I did. I cut my hair off. I cut about three and a half, four inches off my hair. So it's now that long. So it was down to here, and now it's way up here. Because <laughs> I was able to grab my own hair. So yeah, I chucked, chucked, I chopped <laughs> a good chunk of hair off my head. Lawrence is the first to notice. Yep. I figured it needed to be uh, refreshed and a little bit of the layers needed to be refreshed right here because my hair was starting to get like brittle and and gross. Not brittle, but uh, dead ends. That's the word for it. 
All right, so I'm going to press my accent fabric. Does it come in different colors? I guess she's talking about Vinyl can be bought in different colors, yes. You can buy clear pink, purple, blue, yellow, green. They sell it in all different sorts of colors. You might want to go to uh, places that are for bag making, though, because you might find it there in multiple colors. I don't think Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Joann's or any of those kind of places have the other colors, you know? All right, I'm going to go ahead and iron a nice chunk off of here because we're going to cut some strips. This is going to be the part that hooks to my vinyl and my zipper. We're going to build the front vinyl section first. Uh, what cutter are you using? This is a Martelli cutter. You can find it in the link yeah. that Scott just put into the chat. So I'm just pressing this whole big chunk of scrap. I won't be using the whole big chunk of scrap, but I definitely will be using a nice big portion of it. Not big, but sort of. So I want it to be. I said you look marvelous. Thank you. I've, I've realized though over the years, it's becoming a struggle to cut my own hair. Because, <laughs> yeah. I uh, used to be able to cut my hair with ease, but now, it's a little bit harder than it used to be. All right, so I'm just gonna line this salvage up on this and we're gonna, no matter what your scrap is or fat quarters worth of fabric, you're just going to be cutting some two inch strips off of it. So I'm literally going to fold this so that my ruler gets it all. And I'm going to straighten one side out and then make some two inch strips. And what we're gonna do is, I need one, two, three, four. Sorry, the show wants to say hi. Quick. Oh, Thumpy wants to say hi real quick. No iron for you though, kitty. You're not allowed I wasn't to iron. Put him on the iron. He's my boy. I would never do that. No, I just meant if he reached his paw out or something. <laughs> He's just looking at you. He says, what in the world is that mama doing? He's a big old baby. He's a big old baby. He's not going to be happy after tonight because everything is being moved out of the living room and the dining room after my live stream tonight so that the floors can be ripped up tomorrow. Oh, I'm supposed to be cutting two inch strips and the cat distracted me. No, two and a half. That's right. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half inch strips. Sorry. I knew I was cutting correctly. Anyway, I cut four two and a half inch strips. So if you want yours to be scrappy, you can just grab some two and a half inch strips even. Four two and a half inch strips. And what we're going to do is we're going to build around this, but we need two strips per each side. You're gonna see why in a second because of the whole uh, not sewing on the vinyl and not having raw edges. I'm going to take my strip here and I'm going to cut this one for the bottom to be 14, inches because that's the size of my vinyl at this point so everything's going to kind of be like build as you go so i'm gonna cut two 14 inch strips for the bottom where is the 14 on here we'll turn it around like this there we go right there that's nice and straight all right or you can do the sides first it doesn't matter i'm going to do the bottom and then i'm going to do the top and then I'll do the sides. So I have two 14 inch strips here. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to sandwich them right sides together. And we're gonna need some clips for this. 
I'm going to sandwich them right sides together with my vinyl. So I'm going to put the vinyl along the top right here. So I'm literally putting the piece on the vinyl like this. And then I'm going to put the other piece right sides together over it. We're going to encase this vinyl. It's going to be kind of slippery and slick. Just pin it in place. I'm not pin it. Clip it because if you pin, you're going to put holes in your vinyl. So I'm just going to clip it in place. I never clip unless I do projects like this. I don't pin or nothing usually, but this is slippery and I don't want to mess it up. So I'm just putting clips on it, lining it up with the vinyl. And I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam. And my stitch length is about a 2.5 just so that you guys know. So I'm doing just a quarter inch seam. I'm just gonna go all the way. Glue it? Huh? Do you think they could glue it? Glue it first? Do you think we could glue it? Um, I said blow it, but I think it's gonna be glue it. You would see the glue on the front side because we're going to be flipping it over and top stitching. All right. And what I mean by that right now is what we're going to do. So we're going to be flipping this and I'm going to finger press it or you can use a pressing tool like this. We're going to press this top one back. I'm trying not to make any pleats in it because we're not going to be able to put the iron on top of this unless you use a pressing cloth. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to press this other one back. So that way we have no raw vinyl edges. So I'm just peeling it back and using my pressing tool to push it back. And then I'm going to top stitch it. You can do an eighth of an inch seam or you can just line up your foot along the edge right here at the vinyl and top stitch it down. So that's what I'm going to do. That way my foot is not on the vinyl at all because I didn't put the I didn't put my Teflon foot on here. So this is what you should have, a piece that looks like this, hooked to the vinyl. You can see they are like this now. Oh, that's cool. And now we're going to work on the top. So I need to, is that going to be enough? Oh, look at that. That's plenty, but we're going to make a zipper thing for this. And I'm not going to have my zipper against the vinyl, so what I'm going to do... What size needle are you using? I'm using size needle 9014. Um, and they're the... There's a word for it. Titanium needles. All right. I'm going to cut this piece right here. Just like this into an inch and a quarter, the one of the strips, to an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, because that's half of two and a half. Okay. Because we are going to put this on both sides of the zipper and on the vinyl. So one side will be on the zipper, one side will be on the vinyl. Um, there's two pieces per. Oh, Katie, thank you. You didn't have to do that. Um, distracted me. Uh, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, and a zipper in the middle. But your two pieces, you need two pieces for each. So I am going to go ahead 
and trim these down to 14 inches. So I'm going to cut the selvage away first, and then I'm going to come over to 14 inches. And I'm not putting zipper tabs. The binding is going to come to the edge after the zipper is completely cut away. So here's two 14 by one and a quarter. And then we're going to cut two more because you need the bottom side, which will hook to the vinyl. The top side will hook to the top. I'm going to cut two more. Can you explain to them when you get a chance what a Teflon foot is? A Teflon foot is a specialty foot you can get for most machines that is made to go on vinyl or plastic. So it's usually white like this. It looks like this. And it glides smoothly over vinyls and plastics. That's a Teflon foot. I use it a lot when I make vinyl bags. Which I should have it on now, but I don't, so. <laughs> All right, let me cut this to 14 inches. And what we're going to do is move this out of the way. Your needle is titanium, right? Yeah, the needle is titanium. Is I'm going to put one on each side of the zipper. And I'm going to clip it on to the zipper. And then I'll put one on the opposite side. They're going to be right sides together with the zipper facing up, with your zipper teeth and your pull facing up towards you. And then your other one is going to go right. So it's right sides together of the fabric, and the zipper faces you right side out. Have you tried new titanium rotary blades? I have not tried the titanium rotary blades yet. Well, I actually, no, I have. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I had to think about that one. I thought I got some, but I don't. It was the titanium needles that I got. I'm on the top of the zipper. My zipper pull is on my left hand side right now. And I'm going to put this on the top. Just like this. So it's sandwiched with my zipper on the inside. And I'm going to go ahead now and stitch a quarter inch seam on my zipper. You could also use your zipper foot if you don't trust your regular foot, but this is a pretty wide zipper, so it should be just fine for me. I'm going to go ahead and move my zipper head out of the way. And I did not put it to the end of the zipper. I actually put it somewhat in the zipper because I'm just going to cut the excess away anyway. So now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and finger press or use your tool or you can use the iron at this point because technically you can iron on a nylon zipper. You just have to be careful. The zipper noise. Yeah. The cat's the cat's staring at me with the sound of the zipper. <laughs> with his tongue sticking out of all things. <laughs> he was mid lick. And then he decides, what the heck is a mama doing? He's staring. Such an oddball kitty. All right. I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick iron. Just so that it stays nice. What tool was that you're using? That is a finger pressing tool that I got from my friend T over at T Quilts. She sells these and seam rippers, wood pressing fingers and seam rippers with the stiletto combo. I really never use the stiletto part unless I absolutely have to for something, but 
You can usually get the sets, and they come in all sorts of different colors. Yeah. Yep. Yep, she sells them on her website. All right, so I just gave it a quick press. So I have one side of my zipper sewn on. The second side I'm going to sew on, but before I do that, I'm actually going to fold a quarter inch. So my other 14 inch by one and a quarter inch strips, I'm actually going to fold up a quarter inch seam on this piece because you'll see in a minute. So if you have a special tool to do that, do it. But I just fold by hand like this and just go along it. I'm pretty good at gauging that quarter of an inch, but if you're not, you can measure. It is a small little piece. So I'm just folding it wrong sides together and pressing it so that you have a piece that looks like this. And we're going to do that twice. So to the two other pieces for the opposite side of the zipper, we're going to fold that up. So wrong sides together, creating a quarter inch seam. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to proceed to the zipper part first. So I'm going to do that same procedure. I'm going to turn the zipper around now, and I'm going to put the two pieces of fabric right sides together on my zipper. Again, my zipper slider is facing up towards me. And I'm going to make sure that these align exactly the same with my other strips. So we're going to go ahead and clip this on here. And we'll put the other side on it in a minute. And I'm not clipping the side that has that fold, the quarter inch seam fold that I just made. I'm not clipping that side. I'm on the opposite side of that. So I'm on the straight side that has not been touched by a fold of an iron. All right, I'm gonna put this one on it now. Just gonna turn it around and attach it on this way, making sure that it is center with the other one. They should both be in the same position. So I'm just gonna clip and unclip, clip and unclip as I put it on here. This is a pretty simple project to make a project bag. So you can have cute little bags to put your projects in. So you can see that I have them centered on there. So now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew my quarter inch down this side now. Just holding it nicely. Sewing to the end. And now I'm just going to press it back. You're dealing with a very skinny piece here. So just press it back. It's going to be a very skinny piece, but you can do it. I know you can. It's a lot of finger work, but it helps manipulate the fabric. And once you have that, I'm going to do the same thing as before and give it a touch with the iron, but I'm going to try not to unfold my quarter inch seam fold that's in the middle. I'm going to try not to unfold that while I give this a quick press. Just going to keep those together nice and flat. And I could tell that my quarter inch seam folds line right up like they're supposed to. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch now on both sides of the zipper. So I'm going to top stitch both sides of the zipper. It's pretty much like an eighth of an inch of a seam. I'm going to switch it to the other side. I'm not sewing my folded edge closed. Okay, so you should have a unit that looks like this. And one side has a folded in quarter inch seam along the edge, and the other side is just a regular opening. Okay, and then it's top stitched to your zipper. Since I put mine with the zipper a little bit out, what I'm going to do is open the zipper and I'm going to stitch it closed. Just a quick little stitch. My zipper is now open and that end is going to get cut off anyway, but for now I'm just going to leave it on there. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our vinyl piece and that side that we made that fold on. Okay, that side that we folded in those quarter inch, we're going to put the vinyl in between it. We're just going to slide it up in between there. You can go all the way up to the zipper if you feel that's more comfortable for you. And I have to put just a clip on each end because I have no other way to hold it on here. And that's why I'm putting the vinyl all the way into the zipper because <laughs> there's no other way to hold it on here besides these two ends. And I'm going to carefully take this to the machine and I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge that we created, therefore enclosing the top part of the vinyl in to this little section that we just made. Did your Juki come with a zipper foot? My Juki did come with a zipper foot, yes. All right, and there we have it. So now my vinyl is now encased in my big, huge project bags area. So now we just need to do the sides. So we're gonna go ahead now and those other two and a half inch strips that we had, this is probably taller than the 16 inches, huh? It's supposed to be 16 inches. I went way taller, but that's okay. Why? Because it happens. I'll just need a bigger piece of batting, that's all. All right, we're gonna go ahead and I need to get rid of the excess zipper. So I'm just gonna make sure my zipper head is completely out of the way. And we're gonna cut both sides equal with the vinyl. Zipper goes in the trash. I'm gonna come over here to this side, lining it up with the vinyl. And I'm gonna cut this side away. And also nick my vinyl while I'm at it. Okay. Now we're going to take the other pieces. We're going to see how long this is. This is a big bag. 18 inches. We're going to cut these 18 inches. Two of them. So from each of your last remaining two and a half inch strips, you're going to cut 18 inch strips. I'm just going to stack them up, cut them at the same exact time. All right, this is 15 inches, 16, 17, 18. 18 inches is right here, just like that. And now I'm gonna do the same thing as before on two sides. So I'm gonna take one piece 
right sides together along that top edge, along with the vinyl. And I'm going to take that second piece and go right sides facing. Well, it'd be right side facing the wrong side, but technically the right sides of the fabric are facing and you're putting the vinyl in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and line these ends up, put some clips on it. Oi. I'm telling you, it is hard to keep it flat and straight. <laughs> this stuff wants to just like slide everything against it. I guess that's the good part about using it in your bag because your projects will slide in and out of your bag with ease. Come on. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and pre-clip the other side as well so that I can do both sides at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and put them right sides together with the vinyl in between. All the way down. And now the kitty is meowing for no reason again. He wants attention. There we go, and right here, I'm going to add one more right there. And I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam on this one, and a quarter inch seam down the other one. And then we're going to fold them back, and top stitch. Mama's talking, but she's not talking to me. Mama's just ignoring me. There's one side. I'm gonna go ahead and do the opposite side. <laughs> Debbie says he wants to drop cookies. <laughs> he probably wouldn't eat it. Some birds very picky. He doesn't do treats. He doesn't eat treats. He's a picky kitty. All right. So I've sewn. Both, I'm just going to go ahead now and press these out. Yes, iron, I know. You need to be touched. It beeps at me. So I'm just peeling it back with my fingers and using my pressing tool. You can use a roller as well if you have one. Right there, I'm going to turn it around. Press this side back. And then we're going to be top stitching, but we're going to do both sides first. We'll press them back first and then top stitch. This is a pretty simple bag to make. You don't have to use them for just projects. You can use them for travel when you, this is a big bag for travel though, but you know, you can use them for travel and put your you know, bathroom supplies in it or something or whatever, and it can lay flat or you can put, you know, like a nice outfit in it and lay it flat in your suitcase or something, but you can see right through it or make a ton of them and pack your whole suitcase with all of your outfits and little baggies. I think that would be neat. <laughs> Keeping everything nice and clean and separated. You put your shoes in them into your suitcase when you travel. <laughs> trying to give you guys ideas here. Okay, I'm going to do the opposite side. There we go, and now I'm going to top stitch.
one side down, one side to go. This is actually like the perfect size for a shoe bag now that I've said it. Oh, Diane, thank you. How sweet. All right, now that I have a big, huge, enormous outside of my bag, <laughs> bigger than I planned on making, but hey, that's perfect, honestly. Now I'm going to see how big it is. And it looks to be 18 inches all the way around. Maybe that's what I had in my brain because it turned out perfect. What iron are you using? I, my iron is a reliable velocity sensor compact vapor generator iron. I don't know where you can find it. It was gifted to me a long time ago, and it's become one of my favorite irons because it constantly steams. All right, my nice big 18 inch square now needs some sock monkey fabric to go through the window and on the back side because I'm going to use, you know, sock monkey fabric on both sides. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut myself. You can use a half yard, I guess. See, that's why I said half yard. You can use a half yard or this. I'm going to go ahead and cut two 18-inch squares. I'm actually going to cut just a smidge bigger than 18, like 18 and a quarter, just to allow room for shifting because I'm going to quilt my pieces. Okay, I'm going to turn this and straighten it, salvage. Debbie loves her sock monkey pillow that you made her. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you love your sock monkey pillow. Okay, come on. There we go. I did not press this first like I did the other fabric, but I'm going to go ahead and cut about a little bit bigger than 18 inches on this side as well. It's like literally a quarter inch bigger than it needs to be. I'm going to line this side up and do the same exact thing. And then I'll trim it after I quilt it because I'm going to do some straight line quilting on it to make it look cute. All right. And if you guys are curious about this sock monkey fabric, it's called Sock Monkey by Aaron Michael for Moda Fabrics. Sock monkey. That's it's called Sock monkey. monkey. All right, let's see how big this is, my scrap batting. It's not 18 inches. Let's grab a bigger piece of batting. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta move this out of my way. Got to find myself a big, huge chunk of batting, my friends. Give me a minute. Is that big enough? Still in here. He can nope, that it's not. I have these, like, bins back here that are behind cameras. Oh, here we go. Nice big square. Perfect. Nice big chunk of batting. And I don't really care that it's a nice big chunk. I'm going to go ahead and just sandwich my pieces on it. Because I'm just going to um, straight line quilt on it. Let's put it down here towards this edge. Um, yeah. Now this piece, I'm going to go on this side, and again, I'm just using scrap batting, so I don't know, um, this is not cotton, this is 80-20, so it's 80% polyester, I mean 80% cotton, 20% polyester. Yeah, I was I saying it wrong. That. <laughs> I was I saying it wrong. They're evenly spaced on here, and if anything needs to be trimmed, it can be trimmed after. But I am going 
Since this has 20% polyester in it, once I iron it, it will help it stay together. Stay together and flat. Okay, turn it to this side, press it. Now you see why I did a quarter inch bigger. I'm going to cut away this excess batting because it's just in my way. All right. I'm going to make a couple lines on here to follow. So I'm just going to like crisscross. So you can do your lines one of two ways. You can draw them with a erasable whatever, or you can use a hair marker, which if you put this on here and you just rub it on the fabric, it creates a crease. I'm wondering how long my crease will stay, but we'll see in a minute. And then I'm gonna go two inches away from that crease and make another line and I'm just going to cross hatch on my sock monkeys. Two inches from that, which you can't tell down here. We're going to guess. Actually, I could just use a smaller ruler. It'd probably be easier so that I could see. <laughs> I like how you wish, whispered that to yourself. Yeah, make it smaller so I can see. So I'm just creating creases using the hair marker. Or sew lines. And they're two inches from each other. And I do put a little bit of pressure to do this. And inches away and then the corner could you say, use your walking foot guide use my what walking foot guide uh i don't have a guide for my walking foot it didn't come with this machine it doesn't even have a hole for one on the walking foot my little brother machine does have one but i don't want to use that slow poke machine I'd rather just use the jukey, but I could put the walking foot on it if I wanted to, but. Yeah. Where's that next mark right here? I can see my creases. And one more mark, or two, one, I don't know. Yeah, my walking foot for the Juki did not come with one of those. But the brother did, and I thought it was kind of funny too that the Juki didn't come with one. And it doesn't even have the hole for it, but that's okay. I'm just going to straight line stitch. I'm gonna change my stitch length to a three millimeter.
This works just fine. Oh, look at that. Staying really nice on the bottom even. For now. <laughs> the sock monkeys might get into a fight and start making the fabric pucker, but you never know. <laughs> I mean, it happens. <laughs> All right, turn it around and go this direction. I quote, just as fast this way as I do on the long arm. <laughs> I'm one of those just get it done type of quilters. going to mark the opposite way and that was pretty quick I'm just gonna go the opposite direction now I'm using my hair marker to make the lines and I can see them just fine Yep, takes me longer to mark it than sew it, for sure. Yeah, I don't know why my walking foot didn't have the little thing on it, but then why does my walking foot sound like a machine gun when I use it and make it absolutely impossible to sit in front of this machine while using it? So that's why I don't even bother quilting with it. Explain your marker. It's not really a marker. It's not really a marker. It is... I call it a shank most times because you can turn bags with it and all sorts of things. But it has a pretty sharp, I mean, it's not sharp, sharp, like it's going to cut anything. But the edge right here, you find it on your fabric and you push down, you create a crease in the fabric. And I'll hold it up in just two seconds so that you guys can see the creases that are being created. Oh, I'm doing that actually. Hera marker? Hera marker. That's the actual traditional term for it. I don't know where they sell them, but see the creases? Yeah, Walmart has them. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. Well, asking, yeah, so it creates these creases into the fabric when you push down on it. And as long as you can see them, because fabric holds its shape. So if you have fabric bundled up in a box for a really, really long time, all those creases that are created are going to take a long time to get out. A lot of starch and a lot of uh, whatever. That's pretty much the, the use of creating a crease in it to quilt it. Plus, you're not marking it, and you don't have to take an iron to it to get rid of any markings or water to it to get rid of any markings. This actually works the best. Well, for me. I mean, I do use my um, markers, too. You got your wood seam presser from TSP? Yep. What's I got my wood seam presser, wherever that went. Uh, from T Quilts at www.tquilts.com. You could also find her website by just going to her YouTube channel, which I think is what's linked. They said the hair markers at Fat Quarter Shop. I put that link in there too. Yep. Yep, there's hair markers at Fat Quarter Shop. So you guys, Scotty put a link in there for you. Oops. Oh, it came unthreaded. That's why it's just sitting there. I was wondering why the thread's just sitting on the top. All right. 
There we go. Now to sew on these markings. I'm going the opposite direction. Cross hatching. I want my bag to look, you know, cool. My sock monkeys needed some cross hatching. Turning it around, doing the opposite side. Yes, I used a needle threader. I don't, I for the life of me, can never get the needle threader on this Juki. No matter how the needle is positioned, it says to make sure you press needle up, needle down, or needle down, needle up. So that way it puts it in its highest position, and I still can't get the darn thing to work. So I just use a Dritz Hummingbird needle threader. Did it pucker on the back? Oh, it did not. Look at that. I got lucky on this one, guys. So look at that. It is nicely cross-hatched. So the back side, you can see, also did not pucker. I got lucky. <laughs> sock monkeys ain't fighting. Nope, no fighting sock monkeys today. All right, let's trim this down after giving it a good flattening. I'm just going to flatten it real quick with some steam and iron. Nice and flat. The iron, the sock monkeys need some heat. They're getting cold. They say, warm me up, Tiffany. Okay, I sure will. All right. Let's see how good I did with this not having an exact cut. We're gonna stick that right there. And we're gonna take our outside of our bag, I mean the front half with the zipper out. I'm gonna lay it on here and go, oh wow, it matches. Okay, well since it matches, I'm gonna cut this away. There, straight. What's the name of the ironing mat? It is a Quilters Cut and Press ironing mat. You can find them at Walmart, Amazon, local quilt store, everywhere sells them. They're the June Taylor Quilters Cut and Press. Oh, it's not quite. We're going to go 17 and a half and we'll chop a little bit off of our outside. We'll have to check the back side too while we're at it. <clears throat> I never said anything I do was ever perfect, guys. I, I don't ever get anything perfect, especially because 90% of the time I make it up as I go. Turn it this way, and then I'm going to check both sides to make sure that they're... Uh... Oh, look, both sides, good. Uh, yeah, it works. She called me. The lady called me. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this on here. I'm going to have a quarter of an inch on both sides sticking out. So I'm going to go ahead and just pre-cut a quarter inch off of my sides, not my top and bottom. My top and bottom came out 18 inches. My sides are not. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut a little quarter inch 
off of both sides. Because it came out 17 and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this up at 17 and a half. And I got a quarter inch off that first side. Pretty good. I might want to take another eighth of an inch off of it. This side looks to be more than I cut off the other side. Turn it around one more time. And line it right back up. Oh, look at that. Perfect. There we go. I cut an equal amount off both sides. Just going to straighten the top and bottom. It looked pretty straight to me, but I'm going to use the sides that I just cut to make sure. It's a little bit of bowing. This top zipper side should be good, though. Kind of hard because the zipper is there. It's just sticking out right there. That's it. All right, let's put our project bag together and we're going to make some binding and that's how it goes together. So I'm going to for now lay these on here and we're going to clip it all the way around. Watch out, this season clips. <laughs> yep, we're clipping it. Oops, why am I trying to stick my fingers in the clip thing? So you could box your corners if you wanted to on this. Again, I'm not. I'm not going to bother. Make sure that you have the zipper thing facing up. And we're going to pre-stitch around this real quick. So that way it holds it down until we get the binding on here. So I'm just going to do an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then we'll cut some binding and put it on, which is going to come from my last fabric. So I'm just going to stitch around the edge of this for now. I'm literally stitching like an eighth of an inch from the edge. It's just a regular stitch. I didn't feel like changing it again. Okay, so it's sewed all the way around. So here's the basis of the bag, and we're just going to bind it like any other thing. So here's my nice big bag that I can even put my other bags in so far because this is a ginormous project bag that fits other projects in it, <laughs> in their bags. <laughs> so what we need to do is bind it. This is definitely for like queen size quilts. You could put a queen size project in here. All right, let's cut our binding fabric and get this thing done. So I'm just going to do two and a half inch binding like I would with any other quilt or anything. Just going to move that out of the way. I'm going to throw that out of the way. And grab this thingy. because I need to iron this fabric. It's a little on the very wrinkled side. And since mine is not selvage to selvage, I'm not gonna, um, I'll need to make more cuts, but if you are selvage to selvage, I think you only need two and a half strips. Two, two, two and a half, just cut three two and a half inch strips. How about that? Because you need two and a half of them to go all the way around if you do a diagonal seam to join them. Okay. I'm going to cut four strips that are two and a half just to be 
on the safe side. And this is Age to Perfection by Maywood Studio. If you're curious, I use a lot of this stuff. So it was, it's always in my scraps, having pieces left of it. It's a cream color. I love this stuff for fil um, backgrounds and uh, like accent colors. I love this stuff for that. Okay, I'm gonna get four strips for me. Hopefully that's enough. And then the other fabric that I was using is a Moda fabric, Sweetwater, something. I don't know. I think it said Sweetwater for Moda. So whatever Sweetwater line, that's what this other fabric was. That's all that's left of that salvage. And then I already told you what the sock monkey stuff was. So I'm going to hook all four of these strips together. Because I didn't have full strips. So I'm going to cut all the selvages off at the same time real quick. That's left of it. And then hook them together like any other binding on the diagonal. And then sew it on. Or iron it and sew it on. Telling you, this goes pretty quick. So I'm just gonna put my binding pieces together on making an L, so from corner to corner. I'm also gonna change my stitch length back down because it was at the quilting stitch length. Flip it, add the next, flip it, add the next. Till all four pieces are sewn together and it's probably overkill having this much extra, but I always like to be on the safe side with binding because I don't actually do actual 100% mathy measurements because I really suck at math and my math sucks. <laughs> okay, I'm confused where the quilted piece is. Where the project be totally just showing the bag? No, it's right there. Here is the quilted piece on the front and back. And this is the bag. So you can see the plastic is only on the front so that you can see what you put in your bag. Like I said, this is a big enough bag to put shoes in for travel or whatever. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trim all this excess away and then press my binding in half and then Put it on the quilt. So it's the same as any other binding. I'm just cutting away a quarter inch seam allowance. Throw those in my bin down there. And do some ironing. There we go. We're just going to go ahead and press it in half just like we would any other time we make binding. If I didn't tangle it up in the cord on the way. You know another thing that you can put in these that I just thought about? Sheet sets. Because my sheets sit in the cupboard and I, I absolutely cannot stand in the cupboard, they get dusty. So I go to put my fresh, clean sheets from the cupboard onto my bed and they're dusty. But a bag like this, you can put the whole entire sheet set in here and it would fit perfectly. Uh, there is, I don't know. That's a I don't know on this one. No, that's, no. Yeah, sure. But yeah, you can put whatever you want in them. I like the sheets idea because I'm tired of dusty sheets in the cupboard. I 
This wor worked perfect. These fabrics didn't even go together, and it matched my sock monkey fabric perfectly. Because this age to perfection is a cream with brown speckles and mixture in it, you know, because it looks aged. And then the that's the color that's of the sock monkey's feet and hands and mouth area and hat part. And then the brown is kind of speckled on the sock monkey. So I went with the brown speckled and they don't even go together. And they go together, which is kind of cool. So you can see I just press my binding in half, right side or wrong sides together. Sorry, I almost said it wrong. And I actually do my seams, I press them to one side when I get to them. I don't always press them in advance like what I'm gonna do right now. I usually just kind of press them as I come to them. And I'm pretty sure this is overkill on the length needed, but Just want to make sure I have plenty. I don't like to be short on anything. And whatever I don't use can be ironed back flat and used in my two and a half inch square bins because this is a two and a half inch binding. All right, last little section and we could sew it on. All right, so I'm going to sew it on to the back and flip it around to the front. But first, I'm going to make sure that no seams land in the corners. Uh, let's see, that seam is going to land there. And that's going to land not in a corner. Not in a corner. Okay, good. Not in a corner. Yay. I'm going to attach it with a quarter inch seam. And stretch first because, oh. My back starts hurting really bad after sitting here for a while. I'm going to leave a pretty long tail. Most of it will probably get chopped off. I'm going to go ahead and sew it on the same as I do a quilt to, from the back and then I'm going to pull it around to the front. So I'm just doing the same as I do with a quilt. And this is a pretty, like I said, easy bag to make. And my zipper was out of the way on both sides, wherever it is, somewhere on here. So don't forget about that to make sure that your zipper stays out of the way. You're not sewing anywhere near it because it does come. Oh, no, it didn't because I covered it. Never mind. It doesn't come to the edge. We covered it. So it is out of the way completely. Brain fart. That's for sure. Brain fart. Yeah, two, two and a half inch strips would be enough to bind this. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. I'm going to leave so that I can close it. We're going to go ahead and cut away scissors. 
about right here. Come on. Nice straight line right there, which did not happen very well. But this is what happens when I try to do it where I'm sitting. I'm going to take the width of this because it's right here in front of my face. I'm going to put this over it. I'm going to cut it to the size I need. Just like that. Toss the excess away. And I need to open this just a little bit more because that's not going to be enough for me to um, join the two. I'm going to really be tight on that. There we go. That's good. So the top one always gets opened and the bottom one comes up to it. It's like any binding. Join the ends. Sew from corner to corner. What brand of scissors do you like? Uh, I just use cheapo scissors. Ugh. Okay, come on. I didn't give myself enough uh, tail here, so I'm working in a tight space, and it just did not sew on there. Come on, right there. The other end on the corner. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to make sure it's good before I cut it away, just like I would with a quilt. Because technically, this is a little quilted back. I'm going to cut away the excess. Here, I'll bless you. Thank you. Yeah, I just would use whatever cheap scissors. I did recently get a pair of Kai scissors in the mail. But turns out they're left-handed scissors, and they're really hard to cut with with your right hand. And I'm right-hand scissor cutter, not left-hand scissor cutter. I can use rotary cutters in my left hand, but I can't use regular scissors. I'm not coordinated enough, I guess. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finger press the seam so that it's nice and flat. Yep, that's what I planned. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch that closed now. And then we're going to flip it to the other side and top stitch, which should go super easy because, again, it's just the same as any other binding. And everything is so far away from the edge here that once I put that top stitch, just like any quilt and it has the stitch around the back side, you could also fold it and have a lip on the front by stitching in the ditch on the back side. I'm not going to do that because I never do that, so there's no point in doing it now. But there's plenty of room so that your bag, when you put things in it, that extra stitch that's going to be on here, that next to the edge, still gives you plenty of space in your bag. If you box the corners, how would you pin it? If you box the corners, how would you pin it? If you box the corners, then you will have to put binding on the inside because you will have a raw edge. But you could box the corners on here well, if you wanted. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Instead, you would bind it from the inside. So you would have stitched it wrong sides together and bound the inside with, um, um, what is that stuff? It's the same as binding. Uh, I have tons of it. I think it's folded like binding. Uh, I don't know. I don't use regular size binding on that. You can use regular. You can use uh, bias, tape. bias tape. Thank you. See, I can't get words out. <laughs> but yeah, you can use bias tape on the inside. But you would sew it wrong sides together and then flip your bag out after binding the inside of the bag instead. I mean, you could have a, a boxed corner and have a piece of binding on the bottom across the bottom at the corners if you wanted, but you have to fold all that in so that you have no raw edges sticking out. So it would be kind of weird. I did that with one bag, but I bound it from the inside. I don't even know where it is. 
because I have tons of project bags, so. I'm just binding it like I would any other project. But yeah, if you box the corners, you would have to go from the inside. Yes, there's lots of different kinds of vinyl. I'm just using clear vinyl for this. They have different thicknesses on the vinyl too, so watch for that when you're buying vinyl. What's a boxed corner? A boxed corner is like what's on a bag. Can you get that bag down? What Scott's going to hold up now is a box corner. The bottoms are here. You're boxing them in. So you create a square bottom. So that's a boxed corner right there. So it would sit square and then your top part would come in, you know, at the top. But since I'm not putting like a carrying handle or anything on this, you can after the fact if you want, but I'm not doing that for this because it's just a project bag or travel bag or bag to put stuff in. But either way, you can do that if you wanted to. If you want to box your corners, that's what they would look like. On this size bag, I would have cut out a two, a one and three quarter inch corner probably to box. but anything bigger probably would look funny. Trying to tuck in on my loose threads. Not loose threads, but like hanging threads. That like to stick out on me. Some of them are just super long. What size vinyl do you use? I don't know the the millimeter of the vinyl yeah i don't know the millimeter of this vinyl like i said it's like tablecloth thin or like the vinyl that you would find on grandma's furniture from the 1930s and 40s it's like that it's probably thicker than that oh man i'm gonna have some puckering right here at the end I have a little pucker at the end. Why? Because I probably should have cut a little bit excess, a little bit more on that when I cut it off. When you choose fabrics, do you go by the color of the fabric or the pattern of the fabric? Uh, it depends. When I choose fabrics, I just choose fabrics and make something. This, I went by the colors for this. So I'm going to go ahead now and shake off all those excess threads. Can you give the measurements of the small and medium project bag? Hold on. Yeah, when you're done, obviously. I have to cut away a piece of thread that got right here at the 
zipper, causing it to get stuck in the zipper when I close it. Notice I'm throwing the thread on the floor, because guess what? The carpet's being ripped up. <laughs> I'm not vacuuming it until the, you know, once we get the new carpet, then I'll vacuum. Yeah, it's just, it's going out full of thread. It's being just tortured in thread. Although it doesn't help with me walking around in socks because I'm dragging it through the house. But guess what? That floor is being ripped up too. <laughs> Here is my finished vinyl um, project bag. Oop. Trying to de-thread it as I hold it up here. Trying to move all this stuff out of the way. So this one is 18 by 17 and a half. So 18 by 17 and a half because of the quilting kind of shrunk it down a little. And it's got sock monkeys. And it's sock monkeys, which are awesome. And I have lots of loose threads. Too many loose threads for my liking. So there that is. And it's quilted and everything matches and it fits a lot of stuff. I mean, I could probably put my head in it. Oh yeah, it fits my head. <laughs> it fits my head, so that means it's good. <laughs> yes, it does. All right. Are you gonna put handles on it? Um, no, I'm not gonna put handles on this. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I don't have any handles on any of these. So this one right here is a smaller one. This one is 12 by 12. So it comes out 12 by 12. So you got to remember when you make these, the smaller you go, the smaller you're going to make all the extra pieces. So this was probably a one and a half inch piece right here. And then these were probably one and a quarter because these look about the same as this one. When I did this was one and a quarter as well. So, and I did the same fold so that everything is within. The zipper also comes straight to the end so you can open the bag fully, you know what I mean? So this is a 12 inch bag, 18 inch bag, and the small one should be 10 inches. Yep, the small one is a 10 inch bag. And this one was actually in um, in a, one of my uh, Open Gates kit boxes, the little uh, project boxes that you get from Open Gates. So these two have, I need to work on projects in it. I made them all with batting, by the way, and they're all quilted because, and this one actually has so you can take it an extra step. Let me just take the project out of here. And I embroidered in this one. So I actually put embroidery in it. I made a little saying, imagine and create. And then I used the embroidery machine to quilt as well on this section in there. Like it, my, it was only the size of the machine. So there's actually like quilting in there. It's hard for you guys to see that. But yeah. It quilted on that, but not on the back. I didn't do it that way. I just did it on that piece of fabric only on the top part, and then the back was its own. So it says imagine and create inside yeah, of it. Yep. So that, and that's also just made with scraps, as you can see. So it was pieced all together. Now let's put the project back in there. Could you use fusible fleece instead of... Yes, yeah, so you can use fusible fleece. I think this one might have fusible fleece in it because it came from the open gates and usually has fusible fleece for her projects. So that's probably what's in there. So there you go. Small bag, medium bag, super large bag. And like I said, you could put sheets in it because that's like the perfect idea to keep the sheet sets from getting dust on them and getting all stinky yeah. in the cupboard. $30. Yeah. There we have it. Awesome sauce. I like that. So there we have it. All done. And I got to use more sock monkey fabric. Look at all these things I'm making with sock monkey fabric. <laughs> all righty. Well, I am done. Hopefully you guys were able to understand everything that I did today. And oops. Those go over here, those go over there. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, making a bag. The sock monkeys. So everything matches on this one. And I do have a pucker right there in my binding. But guess what? That happens because if you cut your bind, if you don't cut to that exact two and a half inches and then take that little extra sliver off, not even an eighth of an inch, it's even smaller than that. Um, sometimes you'll pucker on the front side because it's just too much. So I ended up with a pucker and it happens. I've had the happen on quilts even, and guess what? I just let it go. It happens. So, I mean, you could rip it all out and find that seam and take in a, even a nice little more out of it, but then you take the chance of tightening it too much. So, you know, or you could use, could have used a walking foot to attach it and just, you know, <laughs> but then you could have just sucked it in better. That's how it goes. Whatever. It happens. So thank you guys all for hanging out. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the termite thing. Well, after this live stream, literally right after this is over, we are moving the whole living room and dining room out of the house. I already got everything off the walls because I'm painting and the walls mostly wiped except for where the furniture is right now. And then, um, so that's all ready to go. That now the furniture just needs to come out. And as of tomorrow morning, the floor out there, all the wood gets ripped up, not ripped, but pulled out nicely because it's just tongue and groove. So it should come up pretty good. And then the termite people come Tuesday in the morning. So, and then after that, we start painting. So that's how that's going to go. So we will be busy this week. All right, guys, I don't see anything else. All right, well, that's it. That's all I got. I will see you guys next Sunday. And during the week, there's other videos. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.